I saw something about next year that will make you need this message because what I saw is going to be a time of turbulence and serious challenge for believers. I'm not a prophet of doom. My teaching grace is enough for me like that. I mustn't prophesy. But if I open my mouth and I tell you something, you just believe it. So don't ignore when you see God bring things like this. He's redeeming the future. There is something he has seen. You see that now. I saw many, many, many people folding their companies and people, both father and mother, losing jobs at the prime, not even knowing what to do. PTA meetings happening and teachers are saying, you cannot drive our children. Why don't you structure the payment? When I saw that thing, my heart, I said, God, what is the meaning of this? When God shows things like this, it's not to put fear, but he's showing it so that believers can be prepared. Now you have something on ground. God has shown you mercy. I wish I had the time I would have taught you on financial carelessness. There are people who are going to spend everything God gave them this December and then suffer by January. Hear this servant of God, don't. There is nowhere written in the Bible that if you don't eat cow and chicken, you will not commemorate the birth of Jesus. Live a modest and a decent life within your means. Are we together now? Remember the dream of Joseph. Seven years of plenty. Seven, if you have the money, fine. You, God bless you. But for many of us, who, especially those that the year has been rough, there is a mindset people have that once it is Christmas, burn everything you have, finish all the money, live a fake and a false life, carry your family and go around the world and then return back and suffer. That's not a wise bargain. For someone, God is helping you to now begin to be frugal. Another thing I would have thought about is, is living a fake life. One of the major reasons, a fake life is very expensive. Write it down. A fake life is very expensive. It takes so much to fund a fake life. And once you start, you must maintain it. A fake life is very expensive. If you are not there, you are not there. You can start gradually with the dignity of kingdom integrity. A fake life is expensive. Don't try to buy a car that is not yet your level. Don't try to go and live in a house that is not yet your level. You are living in a house that you are owing three years rent now. You can't pay back. It's a sign you are not yet there. Get out of that place and look for a decent place. Hallelujah. There are some of us who do not yet have the means to start gathering people and celebrating elaborate birthdays, elaborate occasions. No, be patient. God is bringing you there. Even for schools, as much as I would want you to educate your children at the highest level, you must be wise and keep them within your budget. Find the best school that your budget can afford. If your child is on scholarship, that is fine. Otherwise, find the budget, the school that your budget can afford. But by all means, Koinonia, please hear me. Great disaster is going to befall many. And there are many who will begin to tour the corridors of compromise because of this finance thing. I shall not want, it's not just a prophetic declaration. It is a declaration that comes with responsibilities. And the responsibility is learn all you can. Now that God has given you a good job, don't waste your salary that is coming. Learn all you can about investments. Are we together now? meet intelligent people with integrity who know what they are saying not people playing games all around playing games all around the internet deceiving and fooling people don't fall prey to some of these things seek counsel there are five kinds of investment you must make in your life number one is your spiritual investment number two investment in your mind let me give you this and then we'll wrap up five kinds of investment Number one, your spiritual investment. When I talk of investments, I'm not just talking of putting money. Your relationship with Jesus is a potent investment that has returns, even financial returns. Number two, mental investments. What you store in your mind is there. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. It is there and will always be ready to be delivered when needed. Number three, invest in your health and your well-being is an investment invest in your health and your well-being 
it's often said that people deteriorate their health to make money then they use the money they have made to now maintain their health that is now deteriorated don't be like that invest in your health and your wellness number four invest in strategic relationships relationships are an investment they bring returns mighty marvelous returns they bring returns i shared a story in ghana that i want to share as i wrap up a wealthy man had a son he had a son and this son lived a very careless and a riotous life and the man got sad and said i will never give you anything of my estate and he called the servant and he told the servant you have been a well-behaved person i give you the liberty to choose anything you want to choose and the servant chose the estates chose the cars chose some of the businesses and chose everything and while he was choosing the man was touched with compassion and then he said are you done choosing the servant said yes then he looked at his son he said for mercy's sake i will allow you to choose only one thing and get out of my way and the son said i choose the servant did you get the story i choose what a wise boy i choose the servant means that i chose the car the servant chose i chose the house that belongs to the servant everything why am i saying this there are certain things when you find you have found other things too relationships there are certain things when you find you have found all other things there are things that you truly may not need to bother about again when you get the majors in life because the majors control the minors for instance your relationship with jesus for instance your relationship with men for instance the power of the holy ghost now we're going to pray that song power to prosper we're going to sing it once twice and then i will pray for you that the hand of god will rest upon your head the hand of god will rest upon your hand the hand of god will rest upon your feet rise up on your feet coin on your rise up on your feet don't be distracted sing it once twice go ahead let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me. let your power power to prosper rest on me prayer point tonight and I speak over your life father in light of all that I've heard cause me to walk in these truths and then let your power to prosper truly come upon me go ahead and pray go ahead and pray remember I told you that financial prosperity is a composite of many factors laws and principles human relational factors supernatural empowerment then the God factor. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Father, visit me. Visit my family. The law of absolute surrender. Tithes, offerings. And all kinds of givings. The law of value. The law of productivity, 
the law of excellence the law of relationships understanding investments these are some of the keys then the power to prosper the divine enablement that comes upon your mind empowering your thinking empowering ideas empowering creativity witty inventions the anointing coming upon your hand causing the works of your hands to be blessed extraordinary excellence and productivity the anointing coming upon your feet bringing you direction bringing you guidance and isaac sowed in that land that land that land that land thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it you will find rest for your soul hallelujah hallelujah hopefully in another meeting when we have the time I will share with you a bit of the God factor in the finances of men in every man's destiny a day will come when you will experience something along the lines of your finances that only God can bring it can happen once only in your lifetime just once just once if you are not positioned to discern there are people today their rising is absolutely the god factor god came they discerned they maximized the moment and they stepped into a very supernatural dimension i want to speak over your life beyond doing business god can help men the prophetic can help people prosper i want you to believe it as i speak over your life you will be surprised to see what I, let me tell you the truth i am a man that god has helped i know what it means to be helped by god and i want somebody to experience that dimension of grace father in the name of jesus you place this in my heart to teach your people to help them to know that lack and want is a curse and that it can come out of the believer's life whilst he's serving the lord with the dignity of integrity passionately loving and serving jesus i stretch my hands over those who are here on site the many who are following online in the name of jesus the god factor that is responsible for lifting men i pray for you from the depth of my heart see the hand of god in your finances i pray for you see the marvelous hand of god in your finances may god put it in the heart of men even strangers to locate you and bless you so mightily in the name of jesus i'm praying for you you are in business and the difficulty is connecting to those who need what you carry by prophecy this moment i connect you in the name of jesus you are in this place and you are trusting god for a job it looks like doors have not been opened for you you've not even started because the way to begin to schedule a reward system is not there i'm praying for you may this year not end without you receiving your letter i'm praying for anyone here who is in debt you borrowed money you are in trouble your family is in trouble i pray for you right now in the name of jesus between now and december 31st come out of that financial situation i pray for someone you made careless financial decisions you lost your money maybe you put it somewhere it disappeared someone ran away with your money or some stories i'm praying for you in the name of jesus may god the restorer restore you 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 for those who are not tithing those who are not giving that spiritual root is not there 
the giving grace i release it upon you right now i call your destiny helpers i don't know where they are but in the name of jesus you will not have to look for them by yourself god will bring them to you i say it again you will not have to look for them by yourself my god will bring them to you may this be true for ministries may this be true for churches may this be true for families may this be true for individuals some wealthy person who is looking for someone to bless may god put your name in their heart and i want to pray for those who are already established god is helping you you have businesses you have investments you have structures here and there that meet needs i'm praying for you you will not fail in business i'm praying for you you will not lose your job god will only take you higher and higher in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus you are going to shout i shall not want three times just obey prophetic instructions i'm going to count one two three and you will shout i shall not want i shall not want i shall not want it's a prophetic word you are declaring to the realm of the spirit the bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified from the simplicity of this instruction you will be surprised at the testimonies that will return are you ready now one two three i shall not want number two number three as you have declared it in the name of jesus may my god make it happen in your life may my god make it happen in your life may my god make it happen in your life give jesus a big hand clap hallelujah one is a very big one pray in the spirit in one minute ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 2 please pray in the spirit in one minute hallelujah now there is one key this for many people who god has started helping is the major reason and i won't talk much about this unfortunately but i need to introduce you to it the major reason behind the financial up and down of believers especially those that god has started helping this secret right here is what if you do not understand you will never be wealthy never ever be wealthy this is what turns you from a rich person to a wealthy person the bible says give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth we'll look at it in a number of versions give us niv then nlt and finally good news gnt give us niv it says give portions to seven and yes to eight for you do not know the disaster that may come in the land let's look at nlt it says divide your investments among many places for you know not what risks my lie ahead can we yes good news i like this watch this now put your investments in several places koinonia wake up now many places even because you never know what kind of bad luck you are going to have in this world look up the only way money grows and the only way money multiplies is through investments write it down the only way money grows and the only way money multiplies is through investments if you do not understand investments you will never be wealthy unfortunately these kinds of platforms don't give us the liberty because you are speaking with people and because you are speaking on financially related subjects and with it comes many many things unfortunately but let me tell you this you must learn and master investments if you want to be wealthy a job can give you a salary. you can have a salary saved with time and have some money providing value like i taught you can connect you to a clientele and all together they can give you some money some of us as i'm speaking to you now 
it, God, it's not like God has not been faithful. There is something lying there. But what to do with it is what most people do not know. Is the reason why they keep going up and keep going down. There is nobody who is sustainably wealthy on earth, whether in the secular or in the church. There is no ministry, listen carefully, that is sustainably wealthy on earth that has ignored investments. No. Those days when we were growing, most of the churches in the north, beyond having their assemblies, almost all of them had schools, they had hospitals, they had retreat centers, and for a long time, I, I didn't know why they had to do that. That everywhere the churches were founded within the states. With all due respect, you also see this in many, many what we call our orthodox circles. You will see schools, you will see restaurants, you will see hospitals, and you are wondering why these things have to be there. Eventually, I will understand that the truth is that, please listen, in ministry today, just depending on tithes and offerings will leave you begging forever. COVID taught many people a lesson. As wonderful and tight as tithes and offerings are, people are growing and it takes time for people to grow. It takes time for the word of God to speak over their lives. It's the reason why many sincere laborers in the kingdom are going through a lot of financial tension. There are many people who God has been faithful. They collect salaries, 200,000, 500,000, a million plus for 10 years. They have money stashed in the bank for years, 10 years, 15 years. That money is there because they do not understand investments. It does not grow. Unfortunately, I submit to you that the understanding of investments for the average African, the average Nigerian and the average church person is very, very small. Is the reason why people part away with their monies, making poor investment decisions. Is the reason why many people are in financial troubles this moment as I speak. Because they have to make do with whatever information is available. And most of it is full of all kinds of things. And people get into all kinds of trouble. But rest your mind on this. That when God shows you faithfulness financially, your next project is to settle down and learn everything you can on investments. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. By the time you create systems, they are called. You have entered a realm called oceanic wealth. It's a realm that the Bible calls the wealthy place. You see that now. Apply to be part of school of ministry next year. Hopefully you have a chance to learn in more detail a few things about finances Investments most believers. I wish I had the liberty to talk a lot more on investments But this is important have this at the back of your mind the believer who cannot invest Who does not know how to invest is the believer who cannot perpetuate wealth? For many reasons, there's no liberty to teach this in most detail in church because financial issues are very delicate issues and you are talking to a global audience. Are we together? And there has to be disclaimers when you teach on finances because if people act on your financial advice and get into trouble, you can land in court, they can sue you. So because of that, preachers are not at liberty even when they know how to guide. They are not at liberty to be elaborate beyond these kinds of states but i'm just telling you go and read up on investments and let me give you a strong advice never release your money until you understand what you are doing never it's better to keep the money there and let it not grow don't carry your money and just throw around because you hear that this is happening that is happening Believers again are careless people. Just because someone talks to you and is crying does not mean that you, your money is safe. Investments. There are business people today who don't invest. There are people who have had 10 million lying down for years. They've not been able to invest. 100 million naira is lying there. They don't invest. Whereas somebody, do you know in Abuja here, just a few years ago, there were properties that were going lands for 400,000 a million naira there are people who carry 10 million and bought 10 now one of those properties is not less than 60 million or 100 million say investments and it's not like they were really very smart they just were able to go ahead of time 
and to do that there are some parents today they did not have financial intelligence but the one thing they did was to be able to go and buy some serious plots of land and they kept it they bought some of those lands for less than hundred thousand even in your abuja here and some of those lands right now are in the hundreds of millions and all the person would do is to just sell one and train his whole children to school give a portion to seven year to eight for you do not know the calamity or the disaster that shall come upon the earth i found this secret in my own life and i prayed and studied everything i could study because i do not want to live a life of compromise because of finances i have told you and i stand before the god of heaven i have never preached for money and i will never preach the gospel because of money